Hey there folks, I'm Mysterious JG, and welcome to a new Let's Play adventure. I'm going to play an SNES RPG that I remember having been fun, yet incredibly disappointing when compared to what I expected. This is, as far as I know, the only RPG that was ever made by Squaresoft's American Contingent. It's Secret of Something, which led a lot of people to think it was going to be a follow-up to Secret of Mana, but it's not. It's its own thing. It's called Squaresoft Presents. Okay, the name's not going to come up right away, but it's Secret of Evermore. And this is a this is an oddball. I haven't seen a ton of Let's Plays of this, so I figured I would give it a shot because I had a lot of fun playing an SNES game recently in the form of Illusion of Gaia. So I thought, why not bust out? Secret of Evermore. I'm a fan of grinding and RPGs. This is a game that has lots of grinding. Grinding to level up weapons that you don't end up using. So in fact, I won't be doing all the grinding possible in this game, because this game gives you a lot of non-valuable grinding. It does have a couple of pretty cool looking bosses, including that one, and a pre credit sequence. Not a pre-credit sequence, a pre-game credit sequence. Just little... Little glimpses, a little teaser trailer of adventures yet to come in this game. See a variety of different dogs. There's a poodle. We had a big scary wolf dog before. Now we've got a bunch of enemies who look like they come from Chrono Trigger. And we've got canine! It's like a robot toaster dog. Yeah, it's kind of giving it all away here. It's showing you all the different neat little things that you will get to see later. But uh, it's not giving too much away. So let's get to it here. Um, we have to enter a character name. And I will admit to you that I've already done some off-screening because this game involves a lot of grinding. So I've got a save state. This this was something I used to kill time. I was at the, at the homestead over the holidays and there's big chunks of time when nothing's going on and I could just sit at my laptop and do stuff and not make noise while waiting for the next announced activity of, hey, we're gonna go to the store or hey, the three-year-old niece is coming over or whatever. Or, hey, we're going to watch a movie. A lot of downtime. So I used it to do a bit of grinding to get our weapon levels and some of our magic, in quotes, levels up. I think I named our character Ray Chesney. <laughs> but I'm not 100% sure. I guess we'll find out whenever I get around to loading. I'm not even sure if I would... Oh, I can't put in the space. So yeah, we're Ray Chesney, the Avatar. Because what else would we be? You're new to the channel? Ray, I found out after I'd already started the game, was the in-manual uh, name of the hero of uh, Tecmo Secret of the Stars. Chesney is, of course, the name of the hero of Paladin's Quest. So later on, because I'd named my uh, Secret of the Stars character Avatar, and then when I found out his name was supposed to be Ray, I decided he was Ray the Avatar. Eventually, I've decided that my default hero is Ray Chesney the Avatar. Podunk, USA. USA. <laughs> Fall 1965. And yes, I'm reading the text. Do you want it? Zerfall might be listening instead of watching, so I'm obligated to read it. We have uh, The Adventures of Loxley, playing at the Bijou. A girl is sort of looking weepy as her boyfriend walks her out. Al's Barbershop, it's a quaint little 60s town. Smith's Hardware, 50% off sale on something. An experiment is about to conclude. 
In 1965, war was beginning. How are you, gentlemen? That's an ominous looking series of statues outside of this house with some naked back to back statues, some busty gargoyles. This doesn't really look like it's in line with the rest of the town at all. My friends, prepare to be a part of history. I don't know why I'm talking like this, I don't know who I am. With a twist of the knob here and the something something that went too fast, wait a minute, that's not right. Oh wow, looks like a mad, local mad scientist blew up the town. 30 years later. Maybe it was Dr. Fred. The Lost Adventures of Vex. That's announced the 90s. What a classic! My favorite part was the battle with the slime beats and the toxic swamp. You could hardly tell that it was really a bunch of old tires and a garden hose. I'm not controlling this, by the way. Where are you going, buddy? That's not the way home. Oh, our dog is ch his dog heads off. Our dog is chasing a cat. We are chasing our dog. Our dog misdirects into an abandoned mansion. Now, where did he go? I don't know why I'm distract. I'm not describing everything now. I I feel like Zerf Falls, my only audience. Hmm, the door's open. I'd better take a look inside. Recovering from the cold, folks. There you are. You know, I think that cat is long gone. Hey, where are you going? Are we supposed to be able to see where he's going? Yikes. Watch out for that tree. Oops. Hey, look. A mummy, a chainsaw, and a balloon animal. I don't think we're supposed to be able to see. Hmm, this wall panel is kind of loose. Wow, I think we found some sort of secret entrance. Wow! This looks like the PZS plasma drive and when consonants collide. But Easy for me to say. I wonder if it works. Whoa. We should get out of here before something goes terribly wrong. It's probably too late for that kid. Hey, don't chew on those wires. Oh, our dog's been electrified. Uh-oh, my dog's dead. What have we here? An intruder, I fear. That was some blast. Who, who are you? That's not important. We've got to get you out of here. Sounds good to me. We can't have you meddling with the professor's experiments. Come along. Who's that, Carlton? Do we have a visitor? It's no one. No one at all. Continue with your work, Professor. Um, maybe you should speak with... After you, I'm not sure I trust Carlton. Now what? Remember the first time I have control. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I am recovering from a cold. Um, so that's that's kind of it. This 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 game has a story that uh, my recall from playing this years ago is that the story all kind of gets dumped in at the end. Like you spend a lot of the game not really knowing who those two guys were or what's going on, um, which is one of the many ways in which this is not like Secret of Mana. One of the ways it is like Secret of Mana is that it has this kind of ring control scheme where you you cycle around in a literal circle around your character, these different options. Pressing up and down when we get later on, when you actually can equip items, equip, you know, equip gear and use items, you'll be pressing up and down and opening different levels of rings of options. So the play layout is a lot like Secret of Mana. It basically is a copy of Secret of Mana, but it does pretty much everything that's good. Um, I'm saying the game has a lot of charm of its own. It has a really bad reputation. Those who remember it at all 
among Squaresoft fans. It has like this really reviled status. It's like the black sheep of Squaresoft SNES games. I think it's a lot better than it's given credit for, but yeah, it's it doesn't do itself any favors by setting itself up for direct comparisons to Secret Mana. Anyway, we have no weapons of any type, but as you can see, eventually swords, axes, and spears will be a thing. Rage has any stats, he's got 30 hit points, he's level 1, he needs 20 to level up. The other player, the dog, has 36 hit points and needs 1 to level up. An attack skill 1 of 0. We don't have an attack skill of any kind. In order to get out of here, we need to examine what turns out is a treasure chest. And we received a bazooka. Cool. This does not look good. So suddenly hostile robots show up. We have Thunderball. And we can just shoot it. We can you see a little bar building up at the bottom underneath our hit points to 100 percent That means we have a shot charge now. If I was just swinging it around before it got to 100, I'd just be hitting things with the bazooka. But as you can see, we're now celebrating our victory over the two robots. This looks like a way out, and I've, I've lost control. Is that you, buddy? Buddy Landell, the nature boy? I can't see you. I can't see very well. It's dark in here. Hey, I think this is some sort of futuristic escape pod. I really want to slow the text down. Oops, there goes the control pad. Because every time I try to do commentary, more stuff that I feel obligated to read pops up on screen. God, it looks like we're in some kind of spaceship. Interesting. <coughs> so this game features some Mode 7 graphics. And I remember the last time I played this game all the way through, because I played this on the SNES back in the day, and then years after that I played it on an emulator, a ZSNES emulator, and got all the way through the game, and then the ending, the entire ending, everything after I beat the final boss, didn't emulate pro pro properly, and was unwatchable. So I'm playing on a different emulator now, it's been many years later, uh, but there's still this tiny part of me that wonders, are we going to get to the end, and then I'm going to have to steal somebody else's gameplay footage to show you the ending scene? It's just possible. Whoa, that was some landing. I think the pod and bazooka are shot. Where am I anyway? And where's my dog? Here, buddy. Here, pupster. Where are you, boy? Whoa. Wow, is that really you? You've changed. He's remarkably quick to believe this is his dog. Hmm. If you're really my dog, you'll fetch this stick. Yeah, there's no way another dog would know how to fetch a stick. Okay, go get it. Well, this isn't the stick, but it'll do. Come on, buddy, let's look around. We've acquired our first weapon. Bone Crusher is ready. The Femur of Fury, useful for mangling mosquitoes. So this is our first sword-type weapon. We will be uh, getting, as you can see, basically four swords, four axes, and four spears before the game is over. So if you recall, I'm assuming you've played it. In Secret of Mana, there's about there's like eight different weapons. There's like a sword, a spear, a whip, there's also an axe, there's like chakrams. There's a lot of different weapon types. And you and you can upgrade and get a higher level, like a different weapon of the same type. But your character by using spears will level up his spear. And as he reaches level one, he has the ability to charge up and hold a whole level of charge to a better attack. Once you reach level 2 proficiency with a spear, you can press and hold and charge up a full meter and then a whole second meter and have a level 2 charge, but you're charging for twice as long. At level 8, you can eventually charge up a level 8 attack, but that literally means waiting for an attack to charge up 8 times over. So if you remember Secret of Man at all, you, you know that there's kind of a sweet spot where it's not worth standing around charging all the way up to level 6, level 7, level 8. It's, mu it's usually better to get off 
couple of low-level attacks faster. But at the end of the day, also in that game, you're playing as three different characters. You probably are going to have a different characters using different weapons and get good with them, and you're probably not really going to have any point in having one character, even if it's the main melee guy, be level 8 proficiency with every single weapon type. Well, this game only gives you three weapon types, but it does something really stupid. Once you level up that Bone Crusher, well, you'll get, a, you'll get another sword later, which will fill the slot directly below it. You will have zero proficiency with that weapon, or rather level one. So if I get up to level five proficiency with the Bone Crusher sword, and then get a different, better sword, I'll have to level that one up, too. It's not that you've learned how to use sword-type weapons. You have to get proficiency with each individual weapon. Pretty damn annoying, actually. So it's early in the game, just about anything can kick our ass, as evidenced by the fact that this enemy just did decent damage to our little buddy. <coughs> Attacks where you don't bother to charge up to 100% do like no damage. And our dog can sniff around and find things like roots. We'll figure out what to use those for later. There's not that many places we can go. There's grass that could be cut if we had an axe, but we don't have an axe, so maybe later. Pays to check where your dog is sniffing. But as you saw, even when I had a fully leveled up shot, I was still able to miss a mosquito. Those plants are more dangerous than you'd think at this point. But we're doing just bit by bit leveling up here because we have our first combat challenge of the game. Our first kind of mini boss fight comes before we get to our first town. Although it's you don't have to win the first boss fight. If you fail the first boss fight, you just appear in town. But it's better if you win because you get bonus stuff, so I'm going to try to win. And of course, my off screen save state, we did win. But it would be nice if I could actually show you how to win our first little mini boss fight. The plot so far some kid was on his way home from the movies with his dog who apparently either met him outside the theater or snuck in with him to see the movie. But his dog chased a cat into an old abandoned mansion, which some 30 years earlier had been the subject of some kind of like crazy scientific explosion. You are still sniffing there, like there's something else to be picked up, but I'm not finding it. I said it's a it's useful to go to where your dog is sniffing and pick up the goodies. It's actually not useful to us right now because we're going to be loading state later and any extra items we obtain or money we obtain is not actually going to go with us. Ooh, you are hiding behind the background. You're a tricksy little hobbit. False. So Ray Chesney has reached level two and he found fifteen talons. Talons are going to turn out to be our money at the beginning of the game. But yeah, we went into a haunted mansion. We were found by some oddball butler guy. There was some guy who was like, oh, who's this guy? And the butler guy's like, nobody, sir. And then he shoved us into a little compartment, which led us to be attacked by robots. And eventually launched into... Some kind of strange uh, area where our dog is a big monster dog. We have a bone for a weapon. We're in some kind of jungle. Let's have our first little boss fight. Well, first of all, I want to see... We do have a pedal as a healing item. 
I have a strange feeling about this. At least it doesn't have a bad feeling about this, so it's not Star Wars. Velociraptors are going to attack. And I'm getting my butt kicked. So the yeah, I'm in like critical condition already. I guess I'll I'll probably lose, and then I'll show you what happens when you lose. But the thing is, there's more than one of these Velociraptors. And when they jump out in the middle like that, they're way faster than you can uh, hit them before they get you. So you get wiped out. Your dog drags you out of there. You okay, kid? You took quite a beating out there. Whoa, what happened? The raptors got you. They're a tricky lot, they are. Thanks to this wild animal here, you were saved. Have you been saved, General Viewer? That's no wild animal. That's my dog. That's my wife. He's just not himself right now. Well, now that you're both safe in our friendly village, you can save your game, okay? Sure. Or no thanks, no thanks. Okay, fine. Feel free to take items from the gourds in this village. We know that you'll return the favor. And you'll definitely need the help. <coughs> so that's a little odd. Um, this guy... I appreciate the fact that the game actually comes out and just tells you... Like a character tells you it's okay to steal from our village. Because they know you'll do it anyway. But I, I, I kind of... There's a sense of humor about this game. The guys who made this game had clearly played... JRPGs before. So they threw in that little bit of dialogue. So let's see if we can win this fight. And I'm not even lying that safe scumming might be required. This is totally optional to win this one. Your dog usually is gonna die. Uh, yeah, yeah he's, he's down. I do not have an item to help him recover. See? It's, it's not easy. Because I was trying to... First I tried to run away from it and then hit it on the, the return. Because hitting it as it dove at me hadn't worked a couple times in a row. But I think you just gotta hit it when it dies at you and get lucky. So I got one, but there's about four you have to defeat. We'll get over here. Yeah, I see this is like... I don't know how to time this. So that I'm consistently able to hit it first. And I'm down. I am not going to save scum my way through this game, but because this game... Um, because this is like an optional fight at the beginning, I was kind of hoping to show you a victory here. This is a different save slot. I think... Um, Oh, this is my off-screen, but I'm at the same spot. I didn't save something where we actually had just won this. But I've got three pedals somehow. Okay, so this might help. I either got really lucky with drops, or... Um, I, there were treasure chests that I didn't notice when we on-screened. I still don't want to trade hits with them, because I've got to beat four. And I think the fourth one has more hit points than the others. Oh, good, we got a double on him. You know what? I'll take, I'll say it's got my way through this. Like, lethal with the section where you're fighting past, like, eight billion submarines. Um, 
sometimes there's just one section of game that you gotta save scum through, and you can handle the rest legit. That's 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 me. I don't think there'll be anything else in the game I'll need to save scum through, but if I wanna beat this optional bit, it's it's this hard because you're not required to beat it. So the dog reached Oh, that's awesome. When you level up, you get full hit points, so now the dog will be around to help us for longer. Oh, everything's coming up. Pryphea. Those are Pryphea buttons, but... Get over here, you stupid dog. Don't take the, the initial hit when it jumps out in the middle. I guess dodging off to the side is maybe the thing. There won't be a lot of other major fights where we don't have some ability to heal. Or to charge up more powerful hits than we're capable of delivering right now. That's what it is. I gotta duck off to the side. It's not as tough as I was making it out to be, but you gotta you gotta do it consistently, right? Got to get him to where he's coming at you on a vertical or horizontal straight, and then duck out of the way and hit him. And even then, you you miss a lot of this game. And by you, I mean me. But I think anybody. Would. I think the way the game is set up, you tend to miss a lot. So the dog is out again. It leveling up and getting all those hit points didn't really make it last that long. Yeah, see, if it comes to you diagonally, you don't know which way to dodge. I might just do it without using a bunch of pedals now. I've kind of figured it out a bit. Okay. Get right here. No, damn it. Got on the diagonal again. Damn. Dodge down the wrong way. Didn't think I was going to get another pass of him. Because the dialogue is very slightly different if you win the optional fight, so I'm going to try to win the optional fight. We'll call it a video when this one's over, and we can actually explore the first town, and maybe get a little taste of what's actually supposed to be happening next time. Make it, he's coming at me pretty fast now. He must be pissed. The music's starting to pick up, too. Got me caught. I keep waiting for him to duck back into the bush like he normally would. You got me, copper. You got me, velociraptor. It's like a little baby velociraptor. Or maybe that is like, I guess velociraptors weren't big. They were just fast and aggressive. I haven't watched any of the, Jura the newer Jurassic Park movies. First one was dumb enough, sorry. That wasn't fair, you should have jumped to me and you didn't. I didn't go quite far enough, I guess. I think I'm invulnerable while I'm healing. I sure hope so. I was safe scumming and then I haven't saved for a while because I got confident. Let's see if that comes back to haunt me. Well, if I hadn't missed him there, I would have hit him. Write that one down as a quote for the, the ages. If I hadn't missed him, would have hit him.
There we go. That last one was faster and more powerful. But we got 50 talons, which in the grand scheme of things ain't that much money. And we got a pedal. And instead of our dog dragging us off, we get to walk into town with our heads held high. So the dialogue will be slightly different. Um, you won't get that guy saying, wow, you guys are in rough shape. There will be somebody who says something about how what badasses we are. Although now that I think about it, we didn't find out who that person was and talk to them after failing. So I guess maybe we won't see all the dialogue after all. Wah, wah, wah. Sorry, I guess I'm already not JG in it because I'm not using save load to properly show every possible dialogue outcome. Anyway, folks, that's going to be it for now. This is the Mysterious JG. I hope you'll join me next time as we explore this first village of what appears to be some kind of weird prehistoric world. What are its secrets? And what is the secret of Evermore? Let's find out later.